Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to another exciting toot free edition of this week in pop co uh, toy culture. My name is Arazandia. With me always is Mr. Encyclopedia himself, Mr. Burgipedia. What up the there, Mega? How you doing, sir? Ah, uh, doing quite well. Thank you very much. And if you guys like and what's happening to the show, please like, subscribe, love to our lovely channels. And that's right right below. We're live on Facebook, Twitch, and on YouTube. And if you also like the merchandise, please go to www.artistclub.ninja and go and pick up your favorite shirts, which includes one of our, our exclusive This Week in Toy Culture, the card. Yeah, buddy. Can't go wrong. You can't go wrong with the card. You need the card. Can't go wrong because you always got to have a toy hunting night. There you go. Yeah. Toy hunter's night. Or toy hunter's day. Or, or weekends. Depends on how you do it, you know? Or week. Or months, weekends. Years. <laughs> I, I'm pretty I mean, sure 2020 look, was the toy hunting you know, year, pretty much. Yes. Especially the one Monday you and I had where we went ham. When I mean ham, complete ham from going store to store to store and almost every store we went to you and I made one purchase and it was an it was like an amazing purchase for just ourselves oh yeah and, including and, some and front row parking on every single one too which was even yes. better <laughs> that was amazing like front row parking every place and i found what that uh the bumblebee yeah bumblebee right there my bumblebee i found him at the walmart in coventry uh, we went, uh, what was it? Uh, the t GameStop in Coventry, you ended up finding the Ninja Turtles piece. Uh, we found some comics, some number ones and stuff like that with the, the three packs. So we had, we had a pretty good night for shopping. We, I also bought the, I was at the Ghostbusters. I bought and everything. The Ninja Turtles, not so much. And we were still on the hunt for the turtles and yep. the turtles seem to be the hardest thing to get because we went through inventory after inventory old stock was coming in and we're looking at three four months worth of stock that all of these i guess stores seem to be having and uh you know hopefully we get lucky with first come first serve and hopefully yeah. with the toy community look i've i've asked the toy community every now and then you guys need this They're like oh we already got it or you know time and time again oh, so you got this that's, no. that's the good thing to do. You know, you got to check with everyone to make sure people have it or don't have it or so just to be cool with everybody. You know, the love, uh, the love is it, real. Uh, Steve uh, ended up picking up over, I think yesterday or something, he was at Target and the animated turtle figures were in stock. So he got the one with the oh. Triceratons uh, and the rock figures. Uh, yeah, picked them all up and somebody put them on the shelf in the wrong spot. So they should have been like 40 or 50 bucks or something. He picked each one up for $20. Lady put him nice. in the wrong spot. He was like, um, that is, that's the price, right? The lady's like, yep. So he went up to the counter. He's like, I'll take them all right now. $20 a pop. I was like, don't blame you. Son of a gun. All right. And I was like, hey, if you catch a Raph and, uh, you know, Casey Jones, let me know. Because I would love to get my hands on one of those. I got very lucky that Adam Salty's. Um, aka um, a salty's um, art this uh, helped me out and got me Raphael and Casey Jones, which I showed last year. Was it April, May? Yeah. And it was like one store would have an overabundance of them. Other stores would have like this giant display. Some like didn't have displays. It was interesting to find out who had a display and who didn't have a display. Yeah. And it's funny because certain you'll go to certain Walmarts and certain Targets, and some stores will have one thing set up, another one will have a different one set up, and they vary from store to store, even with some of the toy setups. Like you'll get the what is it the the cardboard cutouts there, uh, and they'll have those shippers, and everything's mm -hmm. in them. And then you go in another store, and it's like no shipper, but they're all on the wall or on the peg hooks. It's right. like guys, stick with you know consistency across the board. And then sometimes it's not even in the right department. It's not even in the toy department. It's <laughs> over in the movie department down the little pop culture aisle or something. So anytime you guys are looking for certain toys and certain action figures or anything, check out the, the movie section where the video games are. Right. Nine out of ten times, you're going to find some pops, action figures, and they do different stuff there in the Walmarts. Targets usually do it on the back wall, right where the TVs yeah. are. So it's right where the TVs are meets almost like the school backpacks. It seems the weirdest thing. They put the kids right there behind the – it's like on the last wall where movies are. So it's definitely well, that's a good basic, place to start. 
Well, that's what they started with, uh, especially when you got the aliens, pred- the aliens action figures and the Predator action figures. They didn't put them with the generic kids toys. No. Anything that was adult collectible at the time ended up by the TVs and the video games. And even weird, go and check the video game aisle because next to, I guess, the tar- um, the PlayStation and the Xbox aisle would be like your Todd McFarlane figures, your... Um, your Fortnite figures, your Overwatch figures were always held there, including your Mario figures. Like any Pokemon figures were always there in the, in those aisles. Yeah, it's crazy. Pretty funny. You know? Pretty funny. <laughs> anyway, should we get the show on the road? Sort of. Yeah, let's, shall we? Let's let's have this uh, toy truck uh, move on to the highway. Let's see what we got. The toy truck to the highway. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you are currently watching the show, please uh, please make sure to like, subscribe, and follow our lovely pages. That will be via Facebook, Twitch, or YouTube. And don't forget to check out our amazing website called artistclub.ninja to pick up your lovely merchandise and your favorite masks. Guess what, guys? Safety matters first. And, you know, winter's here, so will be spring. So you definitely need a new sweatshirt from us. And also, make it a toy culture night for tonight. So don't forget <laughs> to do that. <laughs> little uh, little mayhem humor for you guys. So, uh, yes, we're live, ladies and gentlemen, this week in toy culture for you guys. So let's start with some Hasbro love. Not a lot of Hasbro stuff. Very few. Some of these well, you can find. Some of these you can exclusively find at GameStop.com. And we'll start with the first one. And that is the Queen Amadala from uh the <laughs> the star wars episode one the phantom menace uh these are your exclusive small vintage kenner size figures depending on what size you want to go vintage or kenner size they're all the same size yeah I, you know, the funny thing is like you look at this too and i know it's like hard plastic but the way it looks does it look like it's got robes like the bottom half of it does have that flowing robe look to it and then the top part because you can tell it's different because of the way the bend of the the torso is but it looks very it similar to like having like flowing robes on it. Right. Well, it does have a bit of a flow, which is what you want in an action figure, especially yeah. especially your two and a half, three inch figures. Um, I mean, look, we're going through a year of extra accessories, extra detail, not just generic G.I. Joe box atmosphere with like shoot them up straight. These are extra bendable, we'll say. Mm. Yeah, These are double jointed. More- yeah, a lot more posing capability in them. It's not like your normal, uh, you you know, action figures that we grew up where you couldn't bend the arms, you couldn't bend the hands, you couldn't bend the the legs or anything. At least, it, well, I mean, this one you're not going to bend the legs on her because it looks like it's a solid piece there. Uh, but no, the action figures, you know, the the movement of it. This one does look cool because I I like the the look of the the mask, the way they did everything. They really captured it from the movie quite well. Not so bad and everything, too. Why? Who's calling me at this time? Don't you know, guys? We're live here. Twitch.tv backslash Evil Comics Inc. Guys, we are live. No need to call me right now if you're calling me. If you're one of my... really Guys, really? You got to call me now? Anyway, <laughs> I do like the extra detail that's within the sleeve because normally you don't see a lot of detail. It'll just be straight, slide plastic. It's got... You know, highly detailed, highly banned, as if like it's silk. You know, you got the silk insides. Yeah. Yeah, it does have that look. They went a little bit more with the detail inside of the cloth, which is actually really cool inside the hand, um, which I think is really neat. Usually back in the day, I mean, they never did that, that type of detail. It would just be a plain. So they really went more into the, the intricate details of it, which is really cool. She holding a blaster. Very, yeah, she's <laughs> holding a blaster. You know, you forget during the Phantom Menace. During the Queen and Senator swap, which we couldn't figure out which character Natalie Portman was playing throughout the whole entire show and plus throughout the movie. And then we forget Kira Knightley was literally standing right behind her. And we forget what a young Kira Knightley looked like two years before Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, before she blew up from that and uh, she did that bounty hunter movie and stuff like that. So, yeah. Uh, Domino, the, yeah, the Domino. infamous Domino movie, which was pretty cool. Yeah, definitely I mean, good. People forget that the Domino movie was based of Domino's character for Marvel is based on a real person. So pretty cool. So actually, I just realized this little side art right here that's inside the sleeve is the same side art that's that's on the sleeve. Yeah, they that's did, on the arm. They did a great job with it though. They kept it up the same detail all throughout it. Very intricate, very detailed. 
Mm-hmm. And we got the box art for you guys hunting for the toys. Um, I know these are kind of hard to find. I found these on GameStop.com. So if you're looking for the Phantom Menace action figure, go to GameStop.com because that's where I found her. It wasn't on Hasbro's page. And if we did show it, I don't remember us showing this at all. I don't remember showing it to you. I don't think we've seen this one before. I think this is the first time we've showed this uh, action figure. Yeah. So happy hunting for you guys. We love you. We love you all. <laughs> Next on the list is everyone's favorite, and that is Obi Wan. I mean, Anakin Skywalker from the Clone Wars, <laughs> from Attack of the Clone Wars. Yeah. yeah. What? Oh, no, I'm just laughing. I mean, it's uh, Pancho Villas here with his uh, poncho that he's wearing, you know, his uh, blanket that he cut a hole in. That's true. But here's here's what caught me off guard, and that is his night attire, because I don't remember him taking off the cape. And I don't remember his his party business suit attire. Can someone please explain this to me? Because I don't remember the scene at all. Yeah, no, this is a this is a different one that I don't remember seeing before. And this is uh, it, it looks like he's ready to go out a uh, night on the town somewhere, hit up some clubs or, you know, do a fencing lesson with somebody or something like that. Like, did you say the brie cheese is not fresh? Like, w- what's up with this one? <laughs> I don't know. He looks like he's he's very upset with his dinner plate. So he's like, oh, you know, what it looks like demolition, man. This is very demolition, man. Do you oh, remember yeah, when uh, yep. Sylvester Stallone like takes off the jacket and there it is. Granted, take give him give him some bare arm sleeves right there. He looks like demolition. The, um, Sylvester Stallone's demolition man. But yeah, if if you remember the Phantom Menace, I mean not Phantom Menace. Whoa, Attack of the Clone Wars episode two. Can someone tell me exactly where this scene was, where the cape comes off and you see his dinner attire? Let me know because I don't I don't remember this. And I gotta wait to TNT goes on some crazy. Star Wars spree again for me to rewatch this. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or I know Disney Plus, I know, I know. Anyway, there's Disney the box Plus art. Again. Yeah, but do I really want to go through Disney Plus? Yes. Well, Fine. you're watching Disney Plus at WandaVision, so you know. But that's WandaVision. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting on then on uh, I'm still waiting on um Disney slash Hasbro to re-release some good wanda vision action figures i mean there was a two-pack that was released and it was re-released again so we'll see who's carrying them and who's not uh we also have from episode six revenge uh uh revenge of the return. jedi the return sorry of return jedi. of the jedi thank you to revenge uh, of the sith revenge of the sith the reverse order right it was revenge yep. of the <laughs> yeah <laughs> which made no sense anyway we have the tie pilot um, which was kind of interesting because this is the first time we get to see what they look like under the mask. So anyway, right before we get to that, you know, cool little accessory. It comes with a blaster. Extra, I guess, Ben, how do we say this? Extra posable. creases. Crease, yeah. yeah, posable creases. The bend and snap, we'll say. <laughs> bend and snap. Bend <laughs> and snaps. Yes, as you said before, you know, Mia said, uh, Mia said the same exact thing. Kind of looks like a bullfighter. We were talking about that back, um, backstage before we started the show. That does look like he's a bullfighter. A little action with the TIE fighter, but this is what caught me off guard. And that is. Oh, wait, did I miss it? Did I miss the pose? I don't know. Yeah, I did miss the pose. There we go. Oh. The fifth. The mat, the helmet, and the chest plate that comes off. Dad, is that you? Clone Daddy, is that you? <laughs> ah, you are so on this Clone Daddy thing, you know. Does it not look like Mr. Oh, Mandalorian we, himself? Well, we know it's Boba Fett, you know. We know that. And, you know, every clone known to man, the Bad Batch, all of them, you know, they're all the same guy. But you, you have a good kick out of it. You think Boba is going to have like daddy issues growing up all of a sudden with Star Wars. <laughs> uh, Everywhere he goes, he sees his great uncle or dad. <laughs> Faja, can you hear me? <laughs> right. <laughs> Faja, Faja. Anyway, yeah, that's the TIE Fighter. 
vintage collection from Star uh, by Star Wars, aka the Kenner Hasbro brand, exclusive on the GameStop website. So go to GameStop.com to pick yours up, or I think Best Buy has these as well too. So happy hunting on those. Now, if I have the next figure, hopefully we will be having it. And that is the Cal Custis action figure, second edition. We'll say. Yes. Because the first edition came from the original Black Series box right before they changed it. And uh, this comes with his first costume that you start with the video game with. I dig, I do dig this. Is it? I, I like the little robot over his shoulder and stuff like that. It looks like something like I would see in Mac and Me or one of those other, you know, old 80s TV shows mm-hmm. that they did. Like, you know, Johnny Five is alive, you know? <laughs> that That's what the right. figure looks like. And obviously, I haven't played the game. I got to play the the fall, uh, uh, Jedi Fallen Order. But is that a uh, sure. jumpsuit for, like, basically being a, a TIE fighter, like an X-Wing fighter or something? Is that what he's wearing? Oh, in the beginning of the movie, he's a scrapper. And he's oh, wearing okay. a cape to cover, like, you know, the oil that would, like, come on his body and everything when they're taking apart all the destroyed ships from after uh ta- um from the last from episode six there you go this all continues after episode six okay all right now so they're the right they're scrapping all the metal and everything so which is pretty cool like you start off with them but what's interesting is that this character has the dual lightsaber which you don't get till later down the line because there's two places to get your dual lightsaber. And what's awesome is that you could change the color of your lightsaber, your handle, and you can change the color of the blade. So they stick with the generic blue and your generic green. You can also mm-hmm. pick uh, the gray, the yellow, or the, the yellow and the purple. And think one more other color as well, too, for your lightsaber. Nice. It's pretty cool that you so, have those type of options and you know uh, customization. I mean, dude, I still, I wish, I wish he showed up. I wish he showed up at the end of Mandalorian. I can understand why Luke Skywalker showed up, yep. but I feel like that would have started the Luke Skywalker story immediately where Luke Skywalker meets him on the first scene and then they start working together to build a school. Um, I kind of wonder if they're going to rewrite all everything that was seven, eight and nine. Well, let's hope they can't do any worse than what was already done. And if you're a big fan of video game, I'm a big fan of it. I'm surprised they didn't create. I, I'm surprised they didn't release another DLC for us. Mm. Yeah, maybe give them time. Man. They probably might be working on something new because there is rumors that uh, Star Wars does have a new video game in the works. So this could be one. Who knows? I know, right? And he comes with a little companion, extra companion. For a minute, so I looked down. I was like, "Is that like a corgi beats like a?" Uh, Eevee Chicken. from Pokemon or something? A bit of a mix, both, yes. Yeah. Corgi Eevee mix with a bit of yeah. a chicken paws. I mean, he's got yeah. he's got high points and everything. All right. Is, is this uh, the Pokemon version of the Porg? It grew up? <laughs> it evolved? It did no, evolve? And, <laughs> and just to answer this young man's question, yes, it comes with a holocron as well, too. The list of all the Jedi younglings that are surrounded around the universe and uh, this is why I'm very surprised that when when Cal says I'll answer whoever calls, but Luke calls, but Luke answers instead. Maybe it was the closest one with that Uber lift. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you call for an Uber? Come on in, Pretty Grogu. Cool. Let's go. <laughs> uh, this Cal Custis action figure is exclusive to GameStop. So if you are a big fan of the Star Wars games and you're a big fan of the Fallen Order, go on and grab this action figure because it is exclusive to GameStop. Come see me. Come see me and Jabo. Pre order your figures. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you literally will not get one. Because no. these, right now, a lot of the Black Series figures that are coming into GameStops, so we are getting exactly what we pre ordered. So if you're looking, oh, I'll just get one when they... No, you won't. Trust me. <laughs> it took me I forever believe- to find uh, the Ray with the... the Was it the Rise of Skywalker with the dual lightsaber? I didn't pre-order it. I missed it. Oh, it took me like four months to find it. I finally found one. Pre-orders are real, guys. Jump on the pre-orders. Get them exclusively. Get them in your hands. 
don't wait and don't wait to the other stores to jack them up in price. And we've seen the Ray now go up for about seventy five to one hundred dollars, especially with the um, the Mandalorian figure I showed as well too, not too long ago. They will skyrocket up in price, and that's up to you of what you decide. Twenty to twenty five dollars now. 50 to 150 dollars later and that's up to you because we've seen you know i'm not gonna i'm gonna poke fun with uh the major wrestling podcast where they don't jump on the pre-orders they'll pay the 100 150 dollars later so that's up to you guys don't be like the others pay the play pay little pay the, the legit price for yourselves yeah put some extra coin in your pockets <laughs> was that so, save the coins and the coin Save the yes, save the coin, spend the coin as well too. Um, but but we have some fun action figures for you guys. Yes, and that is Jack specific is no longer around to issue new UFC action figures. There's a new company called Jazzware that is responsible for the new AEW figures that are currently out right now. So if you are a big UFC fan, um these action figures are for you and i know some of the ufc gyms always have an autograph signing or two or they have these big autograph signings so just like us collect them now collect them all before it's too late and yet again if you're a big fighting fan especially a big ufc fan these action figures are for you Bergie, take it away <laughs> uh i think i i can't see it it's uh manda noons uh, she's one of the female uh, UFC fighters uh, in the ring. I don't know too, too much about her, but I do know she's been on the Model commercials that you see uh, for being one of the female fighters in the ring. She is a oh, really Oh, the Modella good beer commercials, yes. Yeah, the Modella beer commercials and stuff. Um, and I think you were telling me that this is her first uh, title belt. It's a different title belt than what they usually wear, right? Well, well she has her, the first edition UFC title belt. And the new octagon inspired UFC championship belt. So she comes with the first edition championship belt. Well, technically third edition championship belt and the new edition, um, octagon title belt that they ha exclusively have right now. Nice. Yeah. So she's a dual champ. Well, she has the, she is a champion. So get it while you can, because look, it's as, as I like to say before, it's always about the accessories. There she is in all of her glory. And if you are a fan of female fighters, she's the first in the line as well, too, especially for all of you Amanda Nunes fans. Dual champion. Yeah. Well, tech, well, technically one time champion, but holding two belts. Totally BA right there holding those two belts, man. And, and, and you know how I make the posters, right? I always have to have my champions always holding their titles. Mm -hmm. This will be a must have for any for any collector. Yeah, and you'll start to see. I, I honestly truly do believe you'll start seeing some of these UFC fighters that will be showing more up at uh, signings at conventions, at you know sporting events and stuff like that because the popularity on them is rising so much. It's not just you have to go to a UFC match or just to get an autograph. These guys will start doing conventions and signings outside of that. So definitely do it. Definitely grab. Yeah, these. I know. Yeah, like there's there's a few wrestling stores that will carry uh, UFC fighters that'll show up. You have the gym as well too that will have UFC fighters, and don't forget these will be pre-signed or be available at the UFC events as well too. So it's your choice is twenty bucks now or the heavier price later. So that's all up to you guys. Mm -hmm. There's the box one more time again. What I really love is the back of the box, and that is. You know, the percentage kick ratio. I mean, <laughs> and look at that hit. Look at oh. that hit. <laughs> that That's a sweet music right there on that, on that other box here, there, the fighter. She, oh. she definitely got her bell rung on that one. They got a good picture on that one. They got a good action shot there. For all you UFC, for all you UFC fans out there, that's the Amanda Nunn's figure. Next up. Uh, Francis... I can't see it because you have the merchandise there uh, covering it. To the top. Oh, duh. I'm an idiot. Oh, my God. Long day. I'm sorry. It's been a long day. Francis Naganu uh, is one of the heavyweight uh, fighters in the UFC series. Uh, I haven't seen him fight too much because usually it's always been McGregor and they've been dealing with some other guys and stuff. I haven't seen him fight too much. 
Uh, but the guy is seriously like one of the better fighters in the, the UFC match. So I'm not surprised that they would give him his own action figure. He does kind of remind and, me of some like regular boxers and stuff like that. The look of him too. He kind of looks like what he kind of looks like Rampage Jackson. If they, if yeah. they would go back and do the legends uh, figures, but I like Which to see them. Will. Oh yeah. Especially getting some Chuck Liddell, some Tito Ortiz, mm-hmm. um, getting Dan to be severed to some Ken Shamrocks, get the old school guys in um, Saint Pierre. get some of them ones there. Yeah. BJ Penn. Yeah. Those would yes. be some of the better ones. And remember, these are this is the same company that used to do the WWE and um, your Rocky figures to your first edition UFC fights as well too. So, getting these and getting an update on them is it's pretty much what you want in your collection as a, as a UFC fan. That There's the front now, of the box again. Now that you say that this is the guys that do Rocky, like I, yeah. it was BA Baracus. That's what it was. I was thinking of uh, Clubber Lang from the Rocky. Yep, that's what yes. I was thinking. That is what you remind me of with that fighting stance. Yeah, and then NECA took him over as well, too, which they only did like a generic pose, but nothing too crazy. But, you know, you want you want your... Come on, you're, you're a fighter. You want your fighter to be like multiple poses. And this is a UFC fighter, so every single grab and pull and joints that you pull off is what you want. And you can relive some of the matches or build your own match. Mm-hmm. And they go hand in hand with your AEW and your WWE uh, figures as well too. So if you want to have a dream match, yeah, there you go. So a lot of these, galore. a lot of these guys did go wrestle in WWE. So why not? Uh, some of them also did wrestle for the NWA as well too. So if you are an NWA fan, especially with the Chuck Liddell, T- Tito Ortiz, and Ken Shamrock, they are former NWA champions in the wrestling in the wrestling ring. Mm. Where Tito Ortiz is, and so is Ken Shamrock. Yeah. There's the back of the box. Next, we also have uh, Israel. Adesanya. Uh, yeah. I have not seen this guy uh, fight in UFC. I know he's, uh, I think he's a, a lightweight or featherweight or so, I believe, for the UFC match. Uh, obviously, he's won a belt. I, I don't know much about him, so I do apologize. I uh, haven't caught his matches. He might be one of the guys on in the beginning. I watched the ends. <laughs> yeah. I watched this the is all the new styles. You watch the heavyweights. Uh, literally, must have in your collection. Comes the championship belt. The first of the, the, the new UFC uh, World Heavyweight titles. I, f- I forget they called it the Undisputed titles. I forgot what they were. They were actually renamed. And then they became the main titles. There's Israel's action figure. With sunglasses, with the happy pose, title belt and all, you know, they put them over the shoulders, they put them around their waist. Look, I wish they would just come in wearing title belt around their waist as they walk into the ring, as if they were like you, uh, WWE champions, and then be like, yep, I'm the champ, come take it. Not like boxing, pay for extra people to hold your title belt, which I don't know why anyone would have, an ent- I don't know why any fighter would have an entourage coming into the ring. I'll tell you, man, if I was in that ring and I was one of these champs, I'm wearing that belt right to the ring and I'm showing it to him like, this is mine. You're not taking it. You know? This is mine. Yeah, don't yeah. have someone else touching your belt. This is mine. This is you want to come ain't touching it. it. Yep, you got to earn it. Can't touch it. Calm down, MC Hammer. I do like that he has the glasses and the glasses pop off. Nice touch there for the accessories, as we always say. It's all about the accessories. You got the title belt. You've got the flag, uh, the glass that you, you can put on and off. I think it's fantastic. Like they right, do a great uh, job with these. Don't let the don't let the extra head fool you. This is with the sunglasses off. So this is what he looks like with the sunglasses off. So the the sunglasses are detachable, retachable. So if you're an accessories person, don't forget to rebag these once you take them out of the box, because I bet you finding these again will definitely cost you the same price as, a, as an action figure. Oh yeah, for that small little bit, uh, sunglass, that's probably twenty bucks. To find that somewhere if somebody has it. You can pay through the nose easily. That. Yeah, easily. easily. There's the box again. Accessories and all. Must have. Must grab. Add it to your collection. Dude, gotta love the action sequence in the back of the box. Yeah, they got some good uh, some good poses here and stuff. I like it. It's not just regular generic artwork or just them standing there and stuff like that. They got an action shot with this uh for for the the poses this is really good 
They did a good well, job. Well, this, this is what I just realized. It's the tail of the tape. And that is his win over his last fight. So these figures are based off their matches, which oh, is pretty nice. cool. Strikes almost by target like, where he hit. Yeah, okay. almost like WWE when it comes to their, I guess, uh, pay-per-view attires. Remember, every single time these guys get into the ring, their trunks and their gloves, they change in some sort of color attire. So, you know, and then there's the there's the tail of the tape right there. There's stats. That's pretty, pretty cool. Neat. I did not know that. That's awesome. There's the tail of the tape. <laughs> and Next. this is uh, yeah. Jorge or George uh, Masvidal. Uh, I do like this one because it's you got the octagon shaped belt with it mm -hmm. uh you got the different you know faces i mean the faces almost look identical like one has like cornrows i think and the other one just looks like he's got the slicked hair back uh on it uh it's very weird and unique to see a ufc fighter without a ton of tattoos <laughs> it's like this dude is clean like no tattoos <laughs> like very strange yes he does come with his extra accessory remember all about the accessories extra championship belt and all but here's what's amazing about this action figure, and that is it is also available as a chase. Ooh, it's a chase figure, one of a thousand. Series one, baby. Series one. Always key to get these because the chase figures are going to be the one that most people are going to be hunting for and going to be the toughest ones to find. Oh, he looks angry there. <laughs> he looks happy. Make... What are you talking about? He looks happy. <laughs> about to whoop someone's butt. That's why he looks happy. Buddy. He's a happy UFC fighter, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. But I do notice all the articulation from the way the thighs move to the knees to the ankles. You could really put these guys into actual moves that you would see them do actually in a ring. So that's actually really neat that they have that type of posability uh, with everything. I need to get one of these figures just to see how well they do. Because remember, some of these fighters will fight with one leg in the air. And can they balance with one leg, with one foot in the air? We always Doubt go through this as well, too. Well. <laughs> Come on, could you imagine? Okay, could you imagine? Because we go through these with the Hasbro action figures where they can't even balance themselves just by standing still. Yeah. And they're and the either... Feet, the feet are never pro like properly flat. And it's always it's right. like a little angle on them. You can never get them to sit and you got to move the leg to get the point. And then if someone just breezes by your your bookcase it falls down you're just like oh give us the deep plates for these things with the little peg hook so we can put their foot on it like just oh stop no uh these are available on um gamestop's website so jump on the bandwagon as well to go to gamestop.com and make your ufc purchases because these are available at gamestop's website there's your chase and here's the here's the interesting part this chase is individually available for your pre-order. So get it. If the chase, the fact that the chase is available, which is amazing. So that's cool that they're not, not going to put it as one of like 10 in a box. Or so you might get lucky and pick this one up. It's you can order this, right? You can actually order this. So interesting. Yeah. That makes Taylor chase tape. hunting so much easier. <laughs> For now, could you imagine? Wait, this is only Series 1. Could you imagine yeah. what happens later down the line for Series 2 and Series 3? Guess what, guys? This is the appetizer. Wait till like, the main course happens because when they start adding more and more chase figures, they become impossible to find, and they become like one per store, especially like a 1,000 available. And I wonder if it's like Hasbro, where if the serial boxes match, the serial number on the box matches the action figure. Because if they say one of a 1,000, and if they did what Hasbro does, where you know they started numbering them, that would be pretty cool. Mm, that has the value that goes right through the roof. Yeah, who's going to grab number one? And who's going to grab number 66, 666? Who's going to grab the 111s, the 222s, two, two, the 333s? Two, 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 the three, three, three. I know a lot of people are very superstitious when it comes to yep. grabbing certain action figures, and especially your numbered figures. Uriah Faber. This dude is a beast in the ring like this is a guy i honestly like i know he does very well in the ufc but i could see him in wwe as a wrestler uh right. with his attitude his personality this dude would be huge 
uh, in WWE. Kids would love him. Like this dude is a monster in the ring. Like I've seen. So him you're a saying if you made the transition from UFC fighter to from your hundred thousand dollar paycheck to your million dollar paycheck for WWE, you see him making that easy transition from fighter to wrestler. Oh, easily he could definitely do it. This man has a wrestling background. Uh, you could see it in the way he wrestles, the way he fights. I've seen him go against guys twice his size, and it's a breeze for him. So, athleticism and everything, I think he'd be a, a no no brainer for a WWE. Definitely should put him in. Maybe who knows? Maybe somebody down the line he does decide to do it. There you go. So, for all you uh, fighting fans out there, here's Faber, Fabor, Faber. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> mispronounced his last name, but still an awesome figure. First in the line, Series One guys. These are the Series One UFC Ultimate Fight uh, Ultimate Series. So get them while they are available, and also we got the back box art as well too. Look at them! Look at them! That's a face of a champion right there. Look how many headshots he did in his last match. Like nuts. He went for the nuts. heads and everything. 18 shots to the head, 82% was target, body two, leg two. That's how devastating this dude is. Like, Oof. legit. His uh, total strike, 73% of the 30 hits, he landed 22 of them. Like, and, he went for, and he has a crazy. And that's his first round win with 40, 49 seconds into the first round. Yeah. That's the tail of the tape, ladies and gentlemen. Dude is a beast. He definitely has that wrestler ear, too. <laughs> the cauliflower ear yes yeah and last but not least everyone well sort of everyone's favorite mr connor mcgregor oh you got you got to tune in connor when connor's on tv no matter what whether it's a commercial espn abc late night whatever it is you listen this dude is musty tv because you don't know what he's gonna say the antics he does is phenomenal you know actually i kind of got the he's that's yeah. the quietest he's ever been right now when he's on screen. <laughs> Action figure as well, too, especially look at that. I mean, who wouldn't want to who wanted want a second edition Conor McGregor in the action figure line as well, too? If you previously if you previously had his first action figure, guess what? Second action figure in the line, series one of the UFC Ultimate Series. That pose. I mean, he's got the pose stands and everything. So I guess they could probably stand on their own a little bit. I think it's with the feet. You look at the way the foots are, the angle on them. They have that natural curve, too. So I think you could definitely get a little bit more of a bend on it with the knees and everything. This, you could definitely do different poses, which will definitely stand. I don't know if you're going to be able to do one on one foot unless you lean it properly. But, yeah, I can see you definitely doing it. There we go. Conor McGregor, dual or two-time with dual UFC champion, I believe. One was intermittent. The other one was a um, champion at the time fighting for two titles. And guess what? Conor McGregor ended up on top with that match. Guys, the only th remember, the only thing wrong title. with this, his smile is not big enough. <laughs> <Smile. laughs> this is true. But, it, but if you're an action figure collector and you like the fact that, you're, that your figure comes with extra accessories... Musket as well too, and if you are a big UFC fan, a Conor McGregor fan, or especially a Conor McGregor, Mag McGregor fan, grab this one because I expect them to do the the two pack with him versus Mayweather. Oh, could you imagine? Yeah, I and could you imagine that? And could you imagine that set where they both come into the ring wearing or holding their um their championship titles? Yeah. That'd be a nice piece to do for two pack, or even if you have like, if they did a Mayweather, you know, action figure, you can put that next to it and stuff like that, because you know somebody would. That was a pretty good boxing match, considering the fact that this man went twelve rounds in Mayweather. Not bad, not bad. Got to give it to him. Got to give it to him as a fighter because it's very difficult to go back in training to go from being a mixed martial arts person to just go back to just one style. Is you've seen, everyone saw it in the match where it looked like Conor McGregor was literally ready to put Mayweather in a chokehold because he had him there in a chokehold, and we're going, yeah. If this was a UFC fight, Mayweather would have lost. But since oh, he God, put him yeah. in a boxing match, Mayweather won hands down. But you have to give it to Conor McGregor. Going twelve rounds is not easy either. Oh, 
Especially and, when you're used to like five minute rounds, three to five rounds is usually most of their bat their matches go. Twelve yeah, rounds at three minutes a pop. Whew. Yeah, and and even if it's you remember championship matches are five five minute five minute rounds, and that's still difficult for him to do exactly the opposite of doing twelve rounds of boxing and doing three minutes of your best work is mm -hmm. difficult hands down as well too, including. Even the change of doing five minutes. By the way, guys, fighting, whether it's kickboxing, bo regular boxing, or MMA, or even karate, is not easy, guys, including jiu-jitsu. It's not easy tra to transition mm -hmm. one after another after not an another. It goes through years of training. We've seen it out of Brock Lesnar. We've seen it at, as, as, as Mr. Jason David Frank. We've seen it as Batista. Um, am I missing someone? We've even seen it out from another Power Ranger as well, too. It's not easy. No. They're definitely well-trained athletes for that. Yes. And, and kudos. Yes. And cheers to the guys that do both and train very well. This is for you, fighters. Cheers. There's your Conor McGregor. <laughs> not bad, though. Happy boy with his two titles. Oh, yeah. Oh, they didn't take the photo from his last batch, so it's all good. <laughs> anyway, every once in a while, we like to throw in. when we, Whenever we get a chance that Mattel would release some action figures, but not off Mattel's website, maybe Mattel can figure that part of it as well, too, why some of their action figures are not listed on their actual website, and we have to go through third-party websites to figure these out, and some of them get extra clogged with, with like stickers and banters or where to get them which become exclusives but guys we got first looks on some of your favorite ww action figures that will be coming out very shortly uh first in the line we like to start with the two pack and that is the two pack of triple h and jeff hardy now this isn't your normal two pack normally your your basic ones come with the side plates but this two pack is from I forget the pay per view event where they wrestled for the Intercontinental Championship. Of course, we all know Jeff Hardy lost, but it was still an awesome match to fight. Uh, awesome match to uh, watch. There's your two pack. Yeah, especially the different wrestling styles that they both have. Like one's a high flyer, the other one's more of a, a bruiser. You know. Mm -hmm. So I give him credit. Oh, he went to he went toe to toe with Hunter Harris Helmsley in the ring, and he was definitely outmatched. I thought. But phenomenal. I match. thought Jeff Hardy, I felt like Jeff Hardy should have won that match, even though we all know Triple H. All it takes is one good hit out of a tired Jeff Hardy. That's all it takes. Mm -hmm. There's your pack. We don't have the exact box art to go with it as well, too. But sooner or later, we will see the box art for the two pack. But guess what? This action figure will not be available till around April or May. So Add it to your Christmas list or Christmas wish list or your personal wish list and go on Amazon's website or Target or Walmart and happy hunting for all of you uh, wrestling figure fans. And if you are, wait till like May or June for your other stores to have them available as well, too. I always love it when the extra stores have them for an extra $10 more than what the retail price is. <laughs> Hey, sometimes you got to go that route. Yeah, I know. Oh. Uh, next, yeah, next on the list we have the Elite Series, uh, the '85, starting with Alistair Black, or as I like to say, the extra from Skyrim, the video game. <laughs> Look at that outfit, man! Seriously, I know, be, but he could going to be in the new Witcher. He's going to be in the new Witcher TV series. Like, look at that. <laughs> uh, you know what? With the way his WWE career is right now, I wouldn't be surprised he made a transition to be part of the Witcher with his in-ring attire as part of the costume. <laughs> they, don't um, have to, they wouldn't have to make new costumes for him. He already has it set. So, uh, there's the um, action figure. That's the bar uh, box that you guys will be hunting for. So happy hunting for all you guys. This is also available as a chase as well, too. So there's a, a, some extra coloring on his attire. So happy hunting for all you chase figure hunters. Yeah, he looks like he could be a Viking, man. That too. That I mean, look, yeah. they are doing the new Viking series, and he can make that yeah, change. Netflix. Most of these guys can easily make that transition, and I think he's Norwegian too, so makes a good oh, fit. Perfect. Look at him. He Swedish? looks like someone that would be 
carry an axe in a, a shield, you know? Yes, <laughs> I, I forget his background. He's, He's either Norwegian or Swedish, which fits the attire as well, too. So um, there's your Alistair Black action figure. Next on the list is the Becky Lynch Miss Money in the Banks with her w with her Raw Women's Championship belt. The man. So what do they have? Uh, they have a female Money in the Bank and they have a male Money in the Bank. Now? Yes. yes. Oh, nice. I like it. She's a good wrestler, so I'm not surprised that she gets her own action figure and stuff like that. Girl can wrestle. Well, we've we've shown her action figure many many times, so. But, but they have this one with the money in the bank, you know, to get that type of one. You know, I'm glad that they gave correct. Because, yeah, you know. correct. Uh, we haven't shown a lot of Becky Lynch. Apparently, WWE has been holding back on a lot of Becky Lynch action figures. So now that she's back, the man is back. But hopefully, soon enough. And just not too long ago, all of you guys were telling me Becky Lynch was going to show up during Money in the Banks, and I say save her for WrestleMania. And I'll tell you, and I will tell you why. Because for, for a woman like her, Royal Rumble wouldn't make sense. Her chasing either Asuka or Sasha Banks would make sense by a WW, by WWE WrestleMania not finishing. And it'll be the first time where we won't have a real winner at WrestleMania. Or we'll have someone coming in to literally add to an extra brawl starting at WrestleMania, basically meaning like have that hype going at WrestleMania on to the next pay-per-view. Nice. That's my hype. I'm going with it because so far when every single fan is saying, Becky Lynch is showing up to Raw, and I said, 100 bucks says, hell no. Guess what? <laughs> Ruby, you owe me, buddy. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we also got Mr. Bray White from the new 85 edition. Also, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, these figures that we're showing from WWE will be available around April and May. So, you know, as I said, get your list going or pre-order them any which way you can via Amazon, GameStop, Walmart, or Target, or wherever action figures are sold. He has a little pig action figure. That's what? part of his attire. Oh, okay. Part of the uh, <laughs> uh, Firefly Funhouse, part of his, you know, gotcha. Firefly okay, Funhouse okay, okay. guys. Yes, he's, if you don't watch the product, you know. Yeah, nah, I can't. <laughs> but he does like he, someone's like everyday uncle there that's ready for a cookout or something. Look at him. <laughs> well, he's the sinister, creepy version of Mister Rogers. Ah. Uh. Yes. Makes sense. If Mr. Rogers could be a bad guy and look extra creepy and weird, here you go. A mm -hmm. Mr. Rogers esque look like I'm surprised they haven't gotten a song and dance a lot with certain songs and storytelling. Oh, uh, this I, I wish they can go back and do a little bit more of doing the Firefly Funhouse and just adding more shenanigans to it, we'll say. Adding a little bit more silly slapstick humor. Cause sky's the limit when it comes to puppeteering and going oh like going one or two steps overboard <laughs> i mean seriously they have gold on their hands and wwe forgets that they have gold on their hands there's the bray, bray wyatt box so happy hunting for all of you wrestling fans out there and look we see it all the time those shelves are always empty version i see it all the time like there's the wrestling section empty empty yeah. empty and i can't, and we can't understand why <laughs> Wrestling figures are hot, man. Every time I go into Target or Walmart, I can never find any decent wrestlers. And if you do find one, it's like the box looks like someone tried to break it open and steal it. And they're like, right. nah, forget it. Four I'm years behind. ago? Yeah, but oh, four yeah. years ago, you couldn't even take these off the shelf because there were so many of them on the shelf. Now, yep. forget it. Every no time one. you go to the store, they're there. Anyway, next on the list. It's Kama Mustafa, a.k.a. Kama, a.k.a. Godfather, a.k.a. Papa Shango. This is right after Papa Shango, before the Godfather gimmick. Um, I like this because if you're a big story fan, especially like an old school WWF fan, this was during the storyline where Kama Mustafa beats The Undertaker, takes the urn, and melts the urn into a chain. And this is the chain that he wears around his neck. That was part of the storyline. So that's kind of cool. That's a good storyline. 
It was a good storyline. I I remember it very well. I remember how awkward it was. Like, wait, that looks kind of shiny. But it also gives it the 90s rope chain look as well, too. And so if, if you're a part of the old school, eight, uh, late 80s, early 90s rope chain, this was part of the 90s look as well, too, of rocking that old school, uh, old school gold chain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's really uh rapper style like how thick it is but but the whole thing with him was this was this was immediately right after the papa shango character had to die this goes back to the ultimate warrior um storyline as well too where fans and parents were not happy with that attire two weeks later comma comma's there <laughs> so <laughs> not a big yeah. feud with the ultimate warrior but jumping right into the feud with undertaker and then being best friends really helped the storyline as well too for several pay-per-views here and there pretty cool and he was part of a uh, million dollar man's team too yep i got a guy that can beat you next is kieran cross carry carrying cross um i forget what part is he what brand is he on i think he's nxt I could be wrong because I haven't seen him on SmackDown or Raw, but this is the first in the line action figure for Cross. Congratulations, Cross, on getting your first action figure. Cheers to you, sir. Uh, if you are hunting, hey, yet again, everyone has a thing for first in the line action figures, and this is the Cross first in the line. Don't forget to get your pre-orders out of the way as well, too. Uh, next, we also have the dark uh, Liv Morgan. This is when she turned heel for a hot minute. And it kind of faded literally into black. As quickly as this character was done, it quickly faded away. It was a really good setup for her and a failed attempt. So, guys, we won't see this attire. She went back to the, to the Riot Squad look right after this. So this will be a one in a million kind of grab. So I'm surprised this isn't a chase figure. It's probably going to be the chase figure. They're going to dub it the chase figure you know in a way yeah so but i think there's a second and if i'm not mistaken there's a second edition one where she's wearing all white so either we're getting the all black look or we get the all white look and she comes with her robe as well too uh bubble bath not included if you watched raw smackdown during that time <laughs> right could you imagine yeah. that would be an extra sell uh, next on that list is yet again, we get another version of Undertaker's last match look of the bad, yeah, the badass Undertaker look. Um, why couldn't they release this as a two pack with him versus AJ Styles and add the tombstone with it? That would be cool. You never know, they could do that if the fans clamor for it and the fans want it, they will definitely add it in. It's just got to get the you know, the behind it. I could see this Undertaker being a set, you know, the background set, the the early the um the tombstone with the buried alive match kind of thing. He does come with a with a shovel, but I think I think WWE or Mattel has to go outside the box a little bit and almost like adding the wrestling ring with two or three action figures. Give us sets, you know, because they've done this many times with their buried alive matches. Uh, um. Randy Orton versus Bray Wyatt, and they were in a shed. Undertaker having outside matches, them doing these theatrical versions. Start doing play sets again, where they're worth grabbing where it comes to two action figures, and we have that Boneyard match. And make them limited. You make them limited, people are going to buy them a lot more, and they're going to get them up. They're going to scoop up. So you have a lot of diehard wrestling fans, especially for Taker, who just retired and he's done. These are uh, no-brainers. These are done. easy money. Going back to WWE Access, so hopefully by not this year, or hopefully this year, I don't think for this year's WrestleMania for WWE Access, but definitely next year for WWE Access, must grab, because if he's doing any type of autograph signings, you definitely, definitely want to add this to your collection. And look, that's the last attire that he's wearing. Mm -hmm. So... But I can also see them doing one later down the line, a new, another version where they add them with the bike. But currently right now, the bike is being sold uh, at Walmart's at Walmart's currently right now. So grab yeah. the bikes. Next on the list, and that is the, um, the WWE Elite Fan Takeover Series 2. These are your Amazon exclusives. 
Uh, we'll start the first uh, action figure with Christian. Christian, you're on your own <laughs> with WWE World Heavyweight Championship. I loved him as a tag team with uh, Edge. So uh, dude, you missed it, right? Roy Rumble, he came back. So, yes. So, once we all know this, once Edge loses at WrestleMania, we'll probably see a quick tag team run with him, uh, with Edge and Christian for a while. Uh, so, yeah, awesome. that'll be pretty cool. Little short tag team run. Even if it's a, a, you know, a pay per view or two, it'll do well. It'll get the crowd back in. That'll be good. Mm. Put him in another uh, TLC match one more time. God. No, not really. Actually, I can see them. I can see them perishing right there. They, they break a hip, man. Come on, they're like forty. They ain't doing that now. Next on that list is Johnny um, <laughs> Gargano, aka with his Wolverine attire, Mister NXT, aka Mister uh, uh, North American Champion. I was gonna say I didn't know they cast Wolverine. My God, I didn't know WWE had a you know say in it. That actually looks better than most of the most of the stuff that uh, uh, that Hasbro or Toy Biz or Fox put out. Yeah, you know, I mean, if they want to, if they want to cast the fun Wolverine during WandaVision, <laughs> there we go. You know, the, I think. Could you imagine? The yeah, they they flip they WWE they flip on they watch that like wait I didn't know Logan was a wrestler like that'd be a huge like thing. But the one thing they did miss out on this I know WWE does is where they kind of copy a lot of like the DC and Marvel and stuff with some of their attire. Why does he not have the mutton chops? Like, doesn't, you know, nah, you doesn't, no, that doesn't matter. I mean, look, he looks good as it is. His favorite it looks like his favorite character is Wolverine, and guess what, guys. We all know action figure and attire sell. So every time you change your outfit, those are new toys for you guys. Yes. So most definitely. Um, so for your fan takeovers out there, this one's for you for your uh, for your undisputed fans. Next on that list is the Rand Randy Orton Intercontinental Champion. This is before he got the extra tattoos on his chest with all the extra surgeries and the extra tattoos on his arms. Yeah, I was gonna say he's missing a few, uh, you know, tattoo sessions here. Oh, this is early Randy Orton. He should have had more hair, but this is before he became World Heavyweight Champion. Yeah, still, still cool pretty figure. cool though. Yeah, and you got the championship belt there. The, I, I like the fact that he came with the mic. We not a lot of the wrestlers come with the mic, so the fact that he has no. a mic, I think that's a key accessory right there that you can use on a lot of different figures. Talk about reselling it. Could you imagine losing that microphone? Oh my god! <laughs> once you lose that mic, once you remember, it's all about the accessories, right? But once you lose those accessories, they are a nightmare to get your hands on later. I mean, you better get a three D printer. It'd be cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to more. We also have the X Pac comes with uh, with Kane's head. Um, when he rejoined NWA for a hot minute, uh, he was actually making fun of Kane and everything too. So he's got the Kane mask. Kind of funny, though. DX for a hot minute, then tag team with Kane with DX style stuff, and then rejoining the NWO right afterwards. Why did I say NWO? NWO afterwards. Um, going with the uh, six look. So it kind of goes both ways because if he has that look, he also looks like six from the WCW, uh, WCW days too. Yeah, I love the everyone. Not everyone knows that his original name was One Two Three Kid. You know? Yes. So I know you know that, but a lot of other people don't. He stopped being the. I watched that big... raw. I remember, I remember that Monday Night Raw like there's no tomorrow. We flips him over, and there we go. And the the whole bottom line was, um. Razor Ramon was friends with him, and Joint Tooth E Kid was supposed to lose. And because yep. he won, he got to have a job on the main roster. So kudos to Razor Ramon for giving him the win and having uh, 123 Kid stay in WWF at the time. Yeah. <laughs> the controversial he's win. A, he's actually a really cool guy. I got a chance to meet him, uh, I want to say 2019 at Rhode Island Comic Con. Super nice guy. Very, 2019. very friendly. 
he was a guest at my first show, and that's at 2015 when he was there with Million Dollar Man himself. Yeah, see, I didn't meet him until 2019 because uh, I never got a chance to, you know, I worked a little harder. <laughs> you worked a little harder, and I froze my butt on that ice, by the way. So. Hey, hey, I didn't put the ice down, all right? Don't yeah, blame I know. me. But I know, I blame the <laughs> that kept the ice on. Uh, <laughs> next, we have the Ultimate Editions. Uh, first off, we'd like to start off with Edge. You know, similar to the two-pack with the clonies, we have the new edition, which is a, his current look. Gray beard and all. <laughs> yeah. I, it's mature looking. Just saying. Got the extra fur going on. Yeah, well, gotta keep me cold in these winter years. <laughs> I love the jacket. I love the jacket that he comes with. Um, kind of makes me want to get like an over, like a long overcoat just to wear. But could you imagine me walking into a comic con with a long overcoat and just sticking around? Like I'd be boiling hot by like two or three hours in. If you don't have a championship belt on, I'm going to be upset with you. I mean, pick one, right? Right. Yeah, you got like a dozen of them. Of them. I know. The funny thing is I could pull one out underneath the table here, pull one off to the side, like literally I could pull one off to the side right here. You know, have your, a little uh, win window sill in the back, right? <sighs> Some world heavyweight championship right there. Uh, the champ is here. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> yeah, smack the champ is here. <laughs> champ is here. Yes, with the inner kind of the title, one of also championship belts that Edge has won throughout his lifetime. Mm -hmm. I love this look though with the face. You literally, I want to take him and just have him jumping off a ring right now on the top rope onto somebody and smack belly. You know, forget that St a steel cage match. He has done a few dives from. Um, he's done dives from the ladder. He's done dives from the top of the cage. So, yeah, you could do any type of action pose, especially for all mm -hmm. those action pose guys or, or uh, wrestling um, photographers. You got an action. You have a ready posed head. Yeah, and he's got that perfect, like he's diving into something. You can see the hair, the way it's going back. And yeah, definitely has a look. It's great. It's look just at creepy. That look at that face. Right to, <laughs> yeah, that, and he's right next to two arms that are going like this. And he's saying like, <laughs> it's a little weird. <laughs> and you know, it's also great too. You know, for a fact that these detach themselves, the hands. So especially mm -hmm. when he's winning the match, you can always replace them real quick. I also wish it came with an extra set of hands, like the, the semi round hands where you can grab. Yeah, I get yep, yep. I know what you're saying. Or also, like, he can hold the belt or hold something, you know, would be definitely nice. Yeah, because these well, don't look. as the hands to hold the belt. Well, that's true. My bad. I'm sorry. I know what you're saying, though. The hands. Yes, the hands. It's all about the. Remember, it's all about the accessories. But guess what? If you have other edge figures that have different hand attires, Remember, if you have a collection of certain figures, you put them all together, but don't lose the accessories because they are a nightmare to find later when it comes to having a full and complete set. And remember, if you love collecting, always buy two slash three for yourself because one to keep, I guess one to resell and one to always open, depending on what your favorite attire is, what your favorite collection is. Anyway, next on our list is probably one of our favorites on this right now. Because that is some um, macho man Randy Savage. Oh yeah, brother. Snap it with Slim Jim. You can't go wrong with macho man. You like, can't go man, wrong. Yes. The outfits he would come into the ring, the colorfulness of it, and dude did not care. He didn't care uh, what he wore to the ring. If you are a Macho Man fan and you can't stop doing the Macho Man voice, this is a must-have in your collection. Because why? You are a big fan of Macho Man or you like doing that voice a lot. And no matter who it is, if they're wearing a shirt and they walk by, you are doing that voice no matter what to that fan. It <laughs> is like it is like the ultimate like thing. Like, okay, so the 24-7 titles around, you always want to challenge someone, right? Or someone comes around with a title, you always want to say, hey, can I hold you up for a hot second? Anytime someone walks around with a Macho Man t-shirt, you... Honestly, you just go, oh, yeah, brother, or oh, what's yeah. up, brother, or something like that, and you do it in the macho man voice, no matter who it is, whether you are a fan or not. And this goes back to the Slim Jim days. Yep. And, and I'm so actually surprised with this one because we did have a Slim Jim edition of Macho Man. I'm still surprised they didn't do a Slim Jim edition of Edge 
who took over as the Slim Jim mascot after uh, after Macho Man. Yeah, but you you got to go with the iconic Macho Man. Like yeah. I knew he did it, but I don't care that he did the Slim Jim. This is this is Slim you know? Jim. Yeah. And I love the fact that he went from WCW to WWE. Slim Jim went with him. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, brother. Macho man in the house. <laughs> and I love this on the, sh- on the jacket. Oh, yeah. yeah. Tell me like you're not. Said. If you are not doing a Macho Man voice on this pose right now, um, I don't have to tell you because you are not a true fan of a wrestling or two collecting action figures or anything pop culture because this synonymous of the hands of the motions that that Macho Man would bring on TV was all about the hands, brother. I just love the hat, man. Look at that neon green cowboy. Listen, the Burgi. <laughs> you don't understand. Yes, I'll probably cosplay as Macho Man one day. Just do it you for should. fun. Just walk around a show. It, you so know what I mean? Selling stuff, and you have that. Like, Let me tell you something, brother. Yeah. And do the handshake, the handshake of your hand holding the other hand, because that's how that's how we did it. You know, he yep. had holding the other hand yep. to like shake your hand, brother. Brought it in all nice and like, and then he get you and get the grip. Yeah, and then when he took his sunglasses off, he was all spazzed out, like yeah, like yeah, what's like <laughs> cocaine? It's a wonderful <laughs> drug. <laughs> so there's your Macho Man Elite Collection action figure. The jacket's awesome too. So yeah. it's got the tassels. He's got not only got the tassels on his jacket, he also has the tassels on the back of the hat too, yeah, I was which is say, the back actually of the hat. funny. The back of the hat, which it took me to realize to, to realize that that's a bandana. But I think if this originally has something on it, and I think because of copyright, this changed. Because if you look at it, then the hat matches the color of each other. Yeah. So I got to go back and find some old photos. I think there was a logo attached to this at one point or something. Maybe it was a, maybe it was a Slim Jim. <laughs> Could be. I mean, if, if you're if you're a Macho Man fan, if you have the photo, please let us know. Um, um, please hit us up on uh, Facebook.com slash uh, This Week in Toy Culture. Or if not that, go to uh, Facebook.com slash Evo Comics Inc. Let us know. Um, did it have a front design on that hat? Because it looks like it did at one point. Or was it the fact that it was shiny and glittery? And that's the reason why. And it's just missing the extra shine of glitter. Ooh, maybe that's it. Maybe it needs extra glitter. <laughs> he always did as well, too. Remember, I always loved yep. the Macho King attire. The Macho macho King with Miss Elizabeth. My queen. Can't go wrong with Miss Elizabeth. There is the Macho Man in its glory. Shoulder pads and all. <laughs> <laughs> Sunglasses, accessories, all of inclusive, part of the WWE Elite figure. These figures run about $30, $40. Totally worth the grab because they always come with extra accessories, whether it comes with an extra head or extra hands, extra arms. And we all know this, all right? He's not doing an action pose. You're doing the promos in the back pose, especially with this action figure. Oh, and the one thing, come on. You know damn well if you're a macho man fan his one of his best poses was off the ring the sideways with the elbow it always looked like he was like doing a little flex for you before he hit you at that elbow that's the pose you're doing for macho man all yes. day long that's the pose now so i next i ever think of now speaking of 80s especially if you're a macho man fan let's talk about the 80s real quick and that is 1989 where a certain movie was made, Batman the movie, fresh to the movie theaters in all of its glory. Jack Nicholson, by far a great Joker. Michael Keaton, Mr. Comedian, becoming Batman. And Tim Burton making a name for himself as director. Ladies and gentlemen, from the NECA line itself, we bring to you 
the Batarang from the Batman, the movie. I love the look of this thing, man. This thing looks mean. Like, this will seriously hurt you. Don't this throw it. Look- don't throw it. Don't throw it. You will hurt somebody. <laughs> I kind of I kind of wonder because some of them will have a Batarang and they'll have a display to it. And granted, the bo- we just only have the box and the box that it comes with it. I wonder if there's more inside the box that it's not showing because this looks like the whole entire Batarang just fits this little this little designed area right here. Mm-hmm. Could this be an extra display, which would be really cool and everything? Because that's the box, right? Oh, that's a lot of foam to hold this Batarang. <laughs> it, it's got to have something in it, and it definitely somehow in probably foam or something. Yeah, because it shows the uh, display. Oh, uh, this is like, yeah, display. This display scene. Yep. So it does have something. So it's got to be inside that box with it. I like that it folds up too because it's magnetic. Uh, you can have so he put it in his belt clip into his uh, you know, multi belt there that he had. So his definitely his, cool. his his weird utility belt that almost like if he hit a trigger in his hand, uh, the device from the back of his belt would come forward. Yeah, <laughs> he had like a little spindle just. It is popped in the front. <laughs> right. It's especially if you're a big Batman fan, Michael Keaton fan as well, too. Tim Burton, 1989. And then <laughs> a must, a must, must grab for your collection. And why? Because you love the Batman and you can't wait to see if ba- if Michael Keaton's Batman makes it into Flashpoint. And the nice thing about this, this is what started the whole movie franchise. A lot of uh, comic book movies to be yeah. more mainstream, not like the sci-fi esque or like the what aired on Sunday at three o'clock in the afternoon. This is what started the the big budget box office hits. Right. So this is iconic. This is something that's definitely must grab if you're a Batman fan. And this is life after Superman as well, too, because don't forget, you, uh, shortly after this was the fourth Batman movie, and that is uh, a Superman movie, and that is the quest for peace. Because off this budget, they Superman DC quickly made a a Superman movie to jump on the superhero franchise, and we all know how that went. Yeah, and we all know Lex Luthor. We all know Lex Luthor was the better actor, and. Granted, Christopher Reeves, you were amazing. You will forever be our Superman. But it was just bad writing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is so true. Uh, there's the box art. That's the box. If you're a big fan, happy hunting because this will be available, I think, at Walmart. So um, be on the lookout for every single Walmart to carry this and um, jump on the Walmart stores. Get your barcodes ready. I know. I know people. I know people hunt with the barcodes now. They went to. They go and check the inventory to see what mm-hmm. stores are available with their products. Kind of crazy, yeah, but kind of worth it too. There's an, app, there's an app out there called Red Brick, and mm-hmm. Red Brick, you can look up and see who has what in stock and everything. Target's getting in a lot of trouble because they can see stuff that's like, oh, we don't have this action figure in stock, and all of a sudden. They're watching it, and they're watching six figures go to five, to four, to three, to two, to one. And they're sold out. They're like, but you didn't have it in stock. So, right. someone yeah. has it. Uh, yeah. Always wait. The employees. <laughs> employees. Oh, look, you have it. See, it's available. Yeah, Target's in a lot of trouble for that with their GI Joe figures. Now, now, now you're talking my language. Now we're talking my language. A little Transformers. A little Transformer action figures. For all of you Transformers fans out there, minus the Michael Bay, Michael Bay editions, <laughs> this is for you guys. For all of you retro Transformers guys, this is for you. Courtesy of PCS Collectibles, their lovely statuettes, I bring you Bumblebee! Bumblebee Tuna! Bumblebee! <laughs> Bumblebee Tuna. The chicken of the sea. Technically, Jessica Simpson was right. Um, I do like this because it's Bumblebee. But you know what I do like about it? It looks just like his little action figure that you, the way he looked in the cartoon, um, mm-hmm. in the movie. They didn't stray from that. It's got the same bright colors, the way the the legs look. They did everything spot on for the actual, you know, great. Right. They did a great job with this, and I love that. 
We have a base. You have the stand, the Autobot logo. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, you know what's amazing, and especially you're going to like this one, for all you old school fans out there who are probably screaming to Michael Bay, that's not what our dino Dinobots look like. Yeah. Because why? This is what our Dinobots are supposed to look like. A.K.A., wow. ladies and gentlemen, we have Grimlock. Grimlock never looked better. Seriously. But I get it. You know, you, you changed up the look of it for the movies, but come on. Did you have to make them look like a realistic T-Rex? Like, this would have been perfect. Fans would have been happy with this. Uh, they were twice the size of a normal T-Rex, bro. Like, like, the fact that you had Optimus Prime being able to ride one <laughs> didn't make sense. It's as if, like, oh. Optimus Prime was our size on a Dinobot, with, on a on a T-Rex. Okay, sure, that'd make total sense, guys. I mean, uh, regular size I, Optimus Prime taking down something that was like four times his size. Right. Like, come on. Uh, Grimlock was about the size of what the Empire State Building would look like. That made no sense. I mean, at this rate, Grimlock could face Godzilla. Yeah, right. That's the next could kaiju you... movie. Right. Right. There, there it is. Your Dinobots could be part of the kaiju series of Godzilla and King Kong because they were almost like skyscraper. They literally were skyscraper size. What was Optimus Prime? Optimus Prime was what? 10 stories, 12 stories high. That's pretty big. And the Dinobots were what? 100 stories tall, which is about the size of the Sears Tower or what the... What I think they did with some of the figures is certain ones, such as like Optimus and stuff, they were supposed to be 40 to 50 feet tall. So it was like four or five stories tall. When you had, you know, uh, Grimlock there when he does the dino, he was literally like 15 stories tall. Like, uh, you This is Optimus Prime. This was Grimlock. Yeah, it was completely like a total mismatch of the way the look of it. And then Wait, he rides these were the, the humans. Battle. These were the humans. This was Optimus Prime and Megatron. It made no sense. Yeah. Or, or you know, Sunwave turned into like a, uh, you know, cassette tape. You know, go figure. <laughs> but I do like this one because the fact that his hands, the way they did it, the legs, the face. This one, the only thing missing right here is he he's missing Wheelie from the Transformer movie. You know, just... I just, just saying that. they could there could be an addition. So next week down the line, we can get the other Dinobots. Hmm. We never know. Next on our lovely little list, and especially for all of you Ghostbusters fans who are currently waiting for the new movie Afterlife. This is for you guys. Currently, uh, Rubber Roads has some new products out. Not too long ago, we had the Trap, which was the uh, the incense burner, which I thought was really cool. Next that cool. on their list, yeah, that's pretty cool. Next on their list is the Ghostbusters lamp sign, which is really cool. A little bit of wall sign you can add to your room. It's not the double sided one that you would get like when you had the Ghostbusters logo, like as if you built the firehouse. But this on your wall, yeah, I, I put that. Look, there's an empty space right there. Yeah, <laughs> this is this definitely got, looks something really cool to put in like someone's living room or like their den, or they have like a you know, man cave per se, or some of their family room downstairs. This is a definitely a neat addition to add to it if you're in the movies and, you know, that type of pop culture. This is fantastic. I absolutely love this. Depending on what this price, is price-wise, I might have to. $50, still not bad um, for the price. No, I don't, I don't even know. Cool. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's battery powered or whatever, but if you're a Ghostbusters fan and you want your house to look like, um, especially uh, the Ghostbusters uh, firehouse, you know they they have the accessory where they have the um, uh, the containment unit, so you can definitely add this to your sign, or you can put this above your entranceway. When someone walks in the house, it's right above where their entranceway is, somewhere down the line. Or you have a man cave; it's right yep. by your exit doors, or by one of the doors, or by the bathroom door. Any way you want to place it, guys, this one's for you for your Ghostbusters fans out there. There it is. We now this is. Us for this week in toy culture. <laughs> That's true. You definitely call us. We're here for you. And don't or forget, do, we guys. We do one eight hundred numbers. No one nine hundred. No nothing. You just call us. We're right here. 
better than a, we have better than that because we have www.artistclub.ninja where we have amazing shirts to help us bring you guys more awesome stuff we have this week in toy culture we have cut the check we have birdopedia i i'm pointing as if i'm right below you and everything um we have tons of shirts for you guys and some exclusives. So go and check out artistclub.ninja for your exclusive This Week in Toy Culture shirt. And don't forget to get the, uh, your exclusive uh, Black Card as well, too, shirt. Um, next don't on that list. Don't go shopping without it. Right, don't go shopping without it. Next on the list, everyone needs bath time. And that is the Rubber Ducky from the same company. Rubber Ducky, you're the one. That's so all I can think of. Whenever I see these, I literally Bert and Ernie, and I think of Bert in my head. Uh, that is one. That is one angry duck. The coolest thing is that he comes with a Ghostbusters bathtub, so it kind of reminds you of Ghostbusters Two when the slime is into it. Yep. So it's almost like a two in one. You have the rubber ducky that looks like Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, and you have the bathtub from Ghostbusters Two. And it's green, so it's covered in slime. I, I think they kind of missed the marketing on that one, but still. He's, he's just a duck. He's here for a good time. we got to take him out in the town, give him some bread. He'll be happy. Just saying. It's Food Week, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, here in New York City. <laughs> stay puff. Oh, I love stay, it. Stay puff, dark, dark, duck, mellow man. Dark, duck, mellow duck. Duck, mellow duck. Yeah. For you guys, <laughs> dark mellow duck, dark wing duck. I'm not. I haven't collected any of these uh, little duck things that they have. But this is one of those ones I might actually have to get because this is absolutely adorable. Like I love this thing. Too cute. Look at, look at he looks, that face. He looks so cute. Like he's so angry. Urgh, I'm gonna beat you up. You know. <laughs> that looks like everyone's girlfriends right now. So, you know. Happy Valentine's Day, guys. Stop looking at toys. Pay attention to me. Arr. Hey, that's what it looks like. This looks like everyone's significant other. Stop going online. Stop playing video games online. Stop looking at toys. Pay attention to me. This is what everyone's significant other looks like right now. <laughs> uh, this is funny. Though. I do like this. This, is, this looks like some really cute. I think this is something I'm probably going to buy. Uh, I definitely think I'm going to add this to my collection. There it this is. is cool looking. I love ducky, it. Uh, ducky tub and all perfect for bath time. If not perfect for your collection, put them on the wall, put them next to your sign, start your new Ghostbusters collection. Cause why you're going back to hunt, to hunt the old Kenner action figures that are recently around too. And they also made these uh, tubs, uh, Ghostbusters uh, figures too, as the, you know, uh, Ray Sand, Egon, you know, Vankman and uh, Zinston Zetamore. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. All right. I'm sorry. I'm getting this. The other characters don't matter. Stay puffed, dar uh, uh, stay puffed, uh, duck, mellow duck is a mm -hmm. must grab for me because this is the face I want staring at me every time. <laughs> he wants that looking at him. You will right? love He's me. Looking at... Here's looking at you, kid. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you try to scorch me and make me into a you know s'mores cookie? <laughs> And we got marshmallows to roast right now. Right? That's what I'm saying. Burnt Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. Now, something straight out of the 90s. Back into our <laughs> lives. Nostalgia and all. Burgy, take it away. A Boglins. This was my God, 90s man. nightmare. This, this brought back so many memories of me as a kid. And my little brother Joey and my little sister Cole with these little things because they hate my little sister they hated these things and on our hand just chasing around the house just like doing my god these things was wow without further ado ladies and gentlemen this is a boggling and this was uh once a toy in the 90s was also a short run TV show as well too Yep. Very, very, very strange. I remember as a kid owning one or two. I remember I owned one. My brother owned one as well, too. I think Bergy owned one. Mm -hmm. um, I do I do remember like it was out of... I remember straight out of Toys R Us. I remember it being in a cage. And I kind of yep. liked it in a cage. And 
they don't have it here, but in the toy store, the bottom of it was open, so you can put your hand in it to play with yes. it, like as if he was still in the cage. Yep. This doesn't have that '90s nostalgia as it should, where the bottom of the box is open for you to still put your hand in the puppet and to have him caged. This is almost like Grim. This is like after Gremlins Fur of One, where this this toy came out. We 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 think back now and like we see some of the weird toys that are out now. Nothing, nothing was like on the eighties and nineties with things that they came out with. Man, they whew, we had some weird Look toys. Look at this, guys. Look at this toy. If you want weird nostalgia for the Bogglings, this is King Drool. The fact that it looked like this. Mm. God, these things were so bad. And when you turned its head, so did his eyes. His eyes, oh. you know. You controlled not only the mouth, but you also controlled the eyes as well, too, which was so cool. But what's really interesting now, these arms really bend now. Before, they were just stable in one position. Now these arms yeah. are, like, bend. Yeah, the arms always stood like this. It was just like they just stood out like it was trying to grab you or something. That was it. I don't these remember the so series. I got to go back and watch the series again. I, I'm now, I want to go look up on YouTube after we're done here and watch one of the... The, Boggling the, episodes. the animation, you know, uh, intros or something for this because this is. Tell me, this also reminds me of something that would be in like Labyrinth or like Legend or something like that. This is what this well, was. Well, this wasn't a cartoon. This wasn't a cartoon series. This was a puppet TV show. Oh, was it? I thought it was a cartoon series. This was a puppet. This was a puppet show. This wasn't a cartoon series. And if it did, they probably changed it for season two, season three, or season four. But this is why the live this is why the the toys look like this because of the live action or the Mupp uh, the oh. Muppet version that they did first. God, I re I remember these as a kid like this, but I didn't remember if it was a you know, like live action TV show or like Frag Rock or it was an animation. I thought it was an animation. Even no, these were I think later down the line switching to animation. Yeah. I remember the movie Ghoulies, such a good movie. <laughs> I like the fact that it's a first edition. I'm sorry, as someone growing up, these are not first editions. These are nostalgia Ew. remakes, ladies and gentlemen. These are nostalgia remakes. Because it's why? We, this is what we like to call remasters. That's what this is. Uh, hug, follow us on uh, uh, Facebook and Instagram, and we'll be happy to post a video showing that these are things from the 80s and 90s, especially 90s, jumping right off the Gremlins bandwagon. And sort of the Muppets as well, too, when it came to Frag Rock and other cost, uh, other things. Next, we have King Dork. <laughs> dork. <laughs> dork. Dork. King Dork. I just love that the, the box says, beware, don't poke fingers through bars, and right. through bottom only. So I'm telling you where to put your hand into the thing. Like, this thing actually looks like a real face. Like It is. Look at the eyes. Dude, the eyes are... Oh my god, man. You want to you want to mess with your friend on on Halloween or whatever? Just get this and start messing with the eyes back and forth. Yeah. Hey kids, yeah. how's it going? <sighs> what a creep out. You want to creep out your significant other? Have this on your wall. Face FaceTime video or something with somebody you just have that and just the little eyes just going darting back. It freaks some people out. Look at that <laughs> side side view and everything and the eyes are looking right at you. <laughs> it's got that hey, I didn't do it. <laughs> And look, the hands move as well, too. And if I remember correctly, when I was a kid, these things smelled. If I remember correctly, they smelled like burnt rubber or something like that. It was like an odor to them. Well, inside was like that heavy foam. Yeah. Inside was a like heavy, posable foam. And right above it was like a, not a latex, but almost like um, the LGN action figures. Like it had like latex rubbery mm -hmm. cover. Uh, very heavy at one point, almost industry like these toys were almost indestructible. I think, I think this was solid rubber, and this had like the heavy foam. So this yeah. was like like you could rip the arms off on them pretty easy if you weren't paying attention, right? And if you were you know messing with them, and I think I think my little brother did rip one of the arms off. I, I do think he did. <sighs> Not paying attention to it or something. Last in the set was King Lube. <laughs> King Blob. King Lube, <laughs> Lube, <laughs> King Lube. Don't look at it right. It's King Lube. They went with that. He looks more happier than the other characters. This is a happier version. Yeah, I guess he's no. uh, 
<laughs> I mean, I I don't know how you can be happy when you're a blue ball, but I'm just saying, you know, he was so happy. Hence the innuendos that they had back in the day too, with a lot of the toys. And he goes, "Hey, yeah. right there with the A," <laughs> with him missing three, a thumb. Three. He, he was a horny guy too. You know, he'll get the horns on his head. You know, he's, he was down for a good time. There's your king of lube, lube, lube. Yeah, that, no, it's king lube. Uh, Remember the K is silent. You know, because yep, it was yep. like you know, and, and uh, when you say gnome, the K is silent. Yep. Uh, all right. Last but not least, to end it all off for you happy Funko. fans out there all in the world. Yes, this show is not complete without going over some Funkos for you guys. But there's not a lot of Funkos. So next week, we all know there's going to be an overabundance because these are leftovers from Fanfare. Of course, Funko was nice enough to give us a little break. Yeah. Sort of. With all of Fanfare giving us one after another after another. So if you haven't hunted for these, these ones are for you. Especially if you guys love Disney. Especially Disney fans. Because this is all leftover Disney for you guys. I, I appreciate the, the I appreciate the slight break because my wallet thanks them because I ordered a lot. <laughs> Uh, no, my voice is thankful because I'm sick of time. <laughs> right? We spent last three time, hours guys, that night just on Funkos. This last time we spent just about over an hour and a half just on Funkos alone for you guys. So last but not least, let's get it to some Funkos. First of all, let's get to some Alice in Wonderland, the 70th edition of Alice. Alice. I see this one. This is something I think they're going to make a chase variant of this. I can see this being a diamond version that'll be a hot topic exclusive all day long and i can see them doing a chase of this with her holding the bottle that says drink me or a chase of it with a little piece of cake that says eat me i can see that being a chase with these i really can well why do they make a chase because a bunch of make the regular version of it later and your chase is always going to be the diamond form aka you can thank you can thank miss not miss marvel you can you can thank the white queen for always being in diamond form yes uh, not is, a lot. If you're an Alice in One Million fan, this is fantastic. This is a perfect thing for you, right? Uh, next on that list is the Alice in Wonderland with the flowers. Oh, so cute! These look weird but, and creepy. They're not weird and creepy. It's like happy dancing flowers. I know nothing's as creepy as having a mushroom given by caterpillar. That's creepy. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. This is a bunch of dancing happy flowers. Think of it like uh remember the movie Hook? Where the plants yes. were sniffing him and being nice and lovely to lovely to him. So uh we also got the Cheshire Cat with the translucent tail. I always did love the, the 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 Cheshire in the movie and the animations they've always done. I always like who they get. Like they pick the right characters to do the voice too. You got to have somebody with a you know very eclectic voice to do this character because he's a quirky style character. Because yeah. he's a deviant little monster. That's basically what it is. He's a deviant, deviant little monster. You know who I can see do, do like that? I think would do a really cool job with this with his voice uh, for it if they did like a live action when they did it. I'd like to see Jim Carrey. No, yeah, you, me. You do well. <laughs> I think Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey like the face of him or something with like the voices and something. If he's not that, I'd love to see him. Uh, you know who'd be amazing? With the... we, we talk about this all the time. William Dafoe. God, that's a, that's a thing in nightmares. He would keep people up. They no one would sleep. Right, but that voice, because he can go to a high pitch voice to a low pitch voice. And the Cheshire Cat was a very deviant kind of kind of a. Yeah. He was very deviant. He was mischievous. He'd point you in the right slash wrong direction all the time. Remember, to, Ch to the Cheshire Cat, right is wrong and wrong is right. Didn't Alan Rickman, uh, who played Professor Snape, he did the voice of the the Caterpillar, right? I think in the I first movie. I believe so. He, his voice was spot on, too. But I was sitting there thinking about it, like somebody quirky with that. I'd love to see Christopher Walken. Tell me Walken doing the Caterpillar and Defoe as this one and have the two of them have a conversation. Oh, that would be so <laughs> awesome. That would behind be this, amazing a little behind, voice casting. A little behind the scenes. I can see Christopher Walken being the, the Caterpillar because he has that like 
that slow tone. Him and 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 uh, what is it? Uh, Jeff Goldblum. Oh God! Because you're yes. walking Jeff Goldblum, especially with the one-offs, because they're very like sentence by sentence actors now. They don't have like yeah. full lines, unless like unless Jeff Goldblum's got a whole paragraph. Jeff Goldblum is, is a sentence by sentence guy. So is Christopher Walken. Jeff Goldblum, you, know, you gotta you gotta do the voice of Jeff Goldblum from like the first Independence Day movie, the way he did that, or yes. and or like um what was uh, Jurassic Park. Yes. You know, like that, that style. Oh, perfect. Yeah, the foe is actually extra creepy. The anyway, continuing really on. We have the Mad Hatter, which this character, I love the fact that this character can go in both directions, whether in Alice in Wonderland or into the DC world. And I actually liked uh, J- uh, Johnny Depp as uh, him. I thought he, played, he did a great job as Mad Hatter in the two movies he did. I, I liked him as it. He's mad, I tell you, mad. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely a great character. Why? Because he's mad. He's mad as hell of the hair. The Mark the coffee, The coffee addict, the AKA, the little, <laughs> the little, he's literally an addict. If you ever wanted to see an addict in real life, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Every single person that wakes up in the morning, I need my coffee in the morning. I need my coffee. I can't start my day without a coffee. Here we go, guys. No, no, no. I can't stop. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Tea. Sorry. They're tea drinkers. I can't have my tea in the morning. They are caffeine addicts. They are, you know, he's got the shakes in the morning. I got to have it. 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 That's me at like conventions. <laughs> That's me at conventions. Need my coffee. <laughs> That's you guys in the Funkos. Gotta have it, 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 gotta have it. If, you, if you're gotta a vendor or an artist and you're ever at a show and you want to get on my good side, I like coffee. <laughs> Make sure before you like drive coffee. me crazy, bring me a coffee. Then you can drive me crazy. At least you came with an offering. <laughs> uh, this this goes to Nicole, if you're watching. Thank you for always bringing me coffee every, every year at Rhode Island Comic Con. Thank you very much. Deeply appreciate it. I love you, 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 love you. Love you. Sorry, acting like the hair just because he's on the screen. If I could sit here and do like a full paragraph with just one breath, that's exactly what he is. Yes. That is so true. And yeah. <laughs> Off with his head. Off with all your heads when it comes to collecting Funkos, guys. The Queen of Hearts with the King? With the King. Yeah. I feel so I, bad. The King is so minuscule. Well, you that's what I was queen. saying. I'm looking at this and I'm like, Tell me it does not look like this would be like a six or a ten inch pop, and then he like he's a regular size. Like that's what I'm feeling like here. I think it could be. I'm not mistaken with the size diameters and everything for this figure. And you're right, kind of looks like him, but this could be a generic one. Remember with the keychain figures, he could be the keychain figure size. Ooh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, the pop on the keychain. Yeah, the pop keychain. So- yeah. So cut the check for us, Funko, because either you're giving us a 10 inch or you're giving us generic size with the minifigure. It's either or, and they both will sell, especially if you're a big Alice in Wonderland fan. And I can see, I can see this being the 10 inch, and that yeah. being the generic size one. Why does the queen look like? <laughs> like the Because that's what it does. Because <laughs> it does. I can see that. I can see that big time. That does look like Liza Minnelli. Yeah. Uh, Mia, if I'm not mistaken, with your current photo right there, why does it look like you, minus the makeup? Just saying. Queen kind of right, looks sure. like you. You're, you're a Funko Pop. You're a Funko you're... Pop. You knew it. They took your design. You're immortalized. <laughs> they, you're immortalized in a Funko Pop. Reggie, get this for her. You know, anniversary gift. You know, anniversary. Right? And congratulations on your wedding on my birthday. So congratulations, yes. Mia. Congra- congrats, uh, Meiji. Uh, Meiji. I'm like, oh my god, I combined your names. Hey, Mia thank you, Meiji. <laughs> Meiji. Congratulations on getting married. I'm so happy for you guys. That's awesome. Dragon Ball Z, where they do the fusion technique. Yeah, right? <laughs> fusion high. Yeah. You got Tweedledee and Tweedledee. Uh, <laughs> you got Tweedledee and Tweedledum for you guys. Is this us doing the show? This is the show. Us. <laughs> Tweedled. No, they work for twins, but yes, there's always a yes, kind of our Tweedledum and Tweedledee. But in a way, we don't dress alike. We don't no. act like. So these are for people that look and act exactly like. But yeah, I can't get, I can't grow that man bun in the back. I'm just saying, yeah. leave <laughs> us alone. 
leave this alone. Well, technically, this is me and Reggie as well. Tweet, Tweedledum, and Tweedledee. Sorry, but you know, you guys are now together, so you guys are a package deal when it comes to certain things. Anyone who is married, this is for you guys. In a way, you the know, you're on keep... this one. I feel like the the top of the hat, the flag should right. be the other side. Should be on the opposite mm. end. You like know? this should have been reversed. Yep, should have been reversed. Yep. This is Definitely. true because if you're because if the finger is pointing in one direction, sitting with the other one, yes, I can see that. Yep. But don't forget this. This is the concept art that we got, so this could easily change for the finished product. And what's cool is this is a this is a two pack. Yeah. So this should uh, probably like twenty bucks or so over take. Uh, usually the two packs are like eighteen ninety nine when they do these uh, type ones. So not too shabby. Nice piece. Still cool. And. Last but not least, my favorite Alice in Wonderland. It's late. Goodbye. Hello. Goodbye. I'm late. I'm late. I'm late. <laughs> I'm late. I'm late. I'm late for a very important date. Who's ever late? Who's ever late for work? This is what you're screaming out the door. Tell me you have not screamed this out the door saying, I'm late. I'm late. And you're screaming this in your head as you're walking out the door. And you're laughing at this. This is... <laughs> <laughs> this is Alice in Wonderland at its finest with the with the with the uh, with the rabbits. In uh, I think it was kindergarten or first grade, I played the white rabbit in Alice in Wonderland uh, for the school play, and I Wait, ran around you... the stage, running around screaming, "I'm late! I'm late! I'm late for a very important date!" And I ran around the stage. I actually have the I have a photo of it, me dressed as a, a white rabbit. I'll try to find <laughs> it. And I'll post it. I'll post it. And post I'll, it. I'll, I'll post did it. You, did, we all did, get a good did laugh. They face it. painted you and everything with the bunny nose and the whiskers and everything too. Did they add I, all those? I, I think my mom did the like the black mascara for the whiskers and she painted my nose. I think she did that. We, we didn't have it like all glued on. Come on, back in the 80s, man, it was like 83, 84 or something when we did that. It wasn't high tech as it is now. Must have been a beautiful baby. He oh, must a, have been a, a beautiful boy. I was a fatty man. At two years old, I weighed in at fifty-four pounds. I looked like the Michelin Man. He Seriously. was a chubby bunny. He was a chubby. Oh, I bunny. was. Chubby I was. <laughs> sorry, sorry, it's getting a little weird. Anyway, the White Rabbit will be coming out very shortly. Uh, April, May is a release date, especially for this one as well, too. So, if you are a big fan of the Funko, especially Alice in Wonderland, go on your favorite uh, Funko stores and go to GameStop.com, wherever Funkos are sold. Go and pre-order them now. Because our favorite, especially ours, we just went we just went ham on it. So <laughs> we kind of just named our favorites just on doing the voices alone. Um, yes, yes. As Mia I said, you must it. post. I will. Next on the Funko list, it is the Pinocchio. It is the what, blue fairy. The one that turned him into a real boy. He wanted to be a real boy. She made it happen. Do you remember the movie AI? With uh, yes. the robot movie with Jude Law, and he was always hunting for the blue fairy. Mm -hmm. This also this also has a dual meaning as well too, with um, you know always wanting to be a real boy, and this goes for any single person always wanting to be a real boy. So happy hunting! Yeah. It's the blue fairy. Here's what I like though, in crystal form, the chase. Yeah. I wish this was diamond. This will be so much cooler. I don't know. I, I feel like the whole thing shouldn't be diamond. I feel like certain costumes or certain attire on them should be diamond form. They'll make this into a diamond form. It'll be a Hot Topic exclusive. It'll be diamond. It'll be the whole where you see the translucent blue dress. That'll all be diamond look. That'll be it. Because they don't make already, the whole you're... pop as a diamond. They just make the clothes. Do make the whole pop as a diamond. Some I've of seen them make the do. whole thing. Some they do. Yeah, some I like do, some they just do the clothes. Yeah, which we've seen when it comes to the Ric Flair one where certain pieces are diamond. What I've seen the Pokemon ones where the full thing is encased it has like the whole diamond. Not really diamond, but you know what I mean though. Some of them are surrounded in Swarovski crystals. And here comes the other hunt. Somewhere encased in Swarovski, or you can get them re replaced with Swarovski crystals. Oh, maybe. That's a little expensive. Hey, hey, hey. One of my championship belts here, not here actually, in the collection, are replaced with Swarovski crystals. Totally worth it. Yeah. Totally worth it. 
Anyway, there's your chase figure. There's the box. Happy hunting for you all your chaser chasers out there. Yeah, fruit chasers out there is my favorite. Figaro. I like this one. Figaro Cleo. kissing Cleo. Like, this is adorable. And I just like the, the look of the cat, like the smile. Like, they captured it perfect. Like, they did a great job with this. I like this little piece. Almost like Tom and Jerry would, like, get along together. This is what it would look like. Yeah. <laughs> if, you know, Jerry if, was a, a if. fish. <laughs> if yeah. Jer yeah, but Jerry's a mouse, so he's a little, uh, you know. And they were cute together because why they were Geppetto's pets. They were yep. always, you know, they were they were buddy buddies. They, you know, it wasn't what the cat was chasing after them, the fish. They were buddy buddies. Yeah, just I do like this one. I like this piece. It's really cute. It's too cute, especially your cat lover. This is mm -hmm. perfect. Next on the list is Geppetto. So I feel like this is one that they could do as a chase as well if they did a different one instead of him with the accordion, maybe him having the the strings with the, the piece of wood, you know? I see him with the paintbrush. Remember where he Ooh, takes the easel yeah. and everything? The next figure we'll see is him with the paintbrush with the uh with the east not easel. You know what I mean? With yeah, the, the palette. The palette. Yep. The palette and then with the paintbrush. Because remember, he takes it and he draws Pinocchio and he draws the smile on his face and that's it. Puts the eyes, puts a nice smile on it. Yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised if they did that and made a blank face Pinocchio where Geppetto, like a two-pack. Oh, give us a two-pack. Geppetto drawing on Pinocchio. Oh, that'd be cool. Or just a blank Pinocchio that you could paint on. You know, that would be a nice piece. Yeah. Yes. There's Geppetto for you guys. Funko, if you're listening and you take any of this, I just want one. Just give me one. I just don't care. I, I want I, I want my I want the ones I submitted, which I didn't get credit for. Give me right. mine. <laughs> oh, God. he looks so cool here. He's ready to go to school. I'm gonna be a real boy. I was gonna I'm say going I just I noticed the legs and the arms. It's definitely like the wood stick figure look. Oh, that's so cool. They did such a great job with that. The, the blockish. Yep. He can't walk straight. He's sort of excited. I'm, you know. I wish I, I put a mouth on him so he's excited to go to school because him on the car in the cartoon movie, he was excited to go to school. He was excited. Yep. <gasps> Ooh. They're going to make the other boys. They're going to make, you know, for a fact, the second and third editions are going to be him with the so-called puppet master or carnival master. They could they could do a movie moment of that or him with the, the whale. The movie, the Moby Dick, Moby. The whale. Was it, Mo was the whale called Moby Dick in the movie or was it called something else? Oh, it's been years since I've watched that. I couldn't <sighs> even tell you. I don't All right, remember. never mind. If you're if you know more than we do, let us know because I forget the whale's name. Was he called Moby Dick or was he called something else? Because I think he was called Moby Dick, but I think they changed it. Don't don't, don't don't quote me, don't quote me, please. I think this one I got wrong, but anyway, yes, it is it is cute. Next on that lovely Pinocchio list, it is Jiminy Cricket. You oh, so you remember a couple months ago we were talking about glow worms. And we said the yeah. glow worm look like Jiminy Cricket. Now we have Jiminy. Now we have the glow glow worm look looking like Jiminy Cricket. Yep. And I'm surprised this doesn't glow in the dark because he was, was the, supposed to glow in the dark. I was looking if I had my glow worm over here, but I don't. <laughs> I got excited. Yours the one that glows glow in the dark. Worm. Yes. Does your glow a... worm glow in the dark? Yes. My glow. All right. Thank you. So it was just called whale. All right. Thanks. But this so definitely this needs to glow in the dark. This is such a perfect piece to glow in the dark. Don't forget, we get first edition. Second edition is him looking like the um, where he has like full tuxedo attire, mm -hmm. which I can't wait to like till I can't wait till that comes out. Is your Jiminy Cricket? Any fond Jiminy Cricket moments from the movie that you can remember? <laughs> Just the song that he always did. I loved the song when I was a kid. Yeah. We all know what's coming next, right? That is Godzilla versus King Kong. <laughs> uh, this is why we don't let Hash drink coffee after six o'clock at night. 
you know, I'm going to be up to four in the morning and you, you know, he's going to get the brunt, him and mayhem are going to get the brunt of it. It's like four in the morning. Text messages all day and all night. <laughs> never. It'll never, it'll never end because why tomorrow at 10 o'clock, ladies and gentlemen, we have to take, and that's a show you definitely want to check out a little more PG 13 rated for you guys, but it definitely must grab. It's only one hour show, but it's chock full of information. And guess what? One of us usually gets angry, and it's always a wax on and wax off moment. You know, a little full circle for you guys as well too, with certain uh, with certain piece uh, with certain uh, topics. So, yeah. watch the take on Wednesday, ten o'clock. I do like this one because it's battle ready Kong, and then I think the one right after this it shows where he actually has the scar, like it's a fresh scar. Well, yeah, you have the uh, yeah, you have the scar, scar, yeah. and then you have. You know, more scars. <laughs> he's got updated scars. And look, he's got a piece of the scaffolding. Yeah. Is that Molnir, the beginning phase? <laughs> I don't know. This looks like he looks like he just got out of like the island. Yeah. And this looks like Godzilla definitely took a piece out of him. Yeah, Godzilla definitely uh, got a hold of him a little bit. Next on that one is Godzilla himself. And this looks pretty cool. And this is the 10-inch Godzilla piece. This is going to be a must-buy. I can't wait to see the size of the box of what this is going to look like. I expect this <laughs> box agree. to be something out of uh, like the baby Goku. Oh, baby, baby Goku. <laughs> baby oh, Yoda. You know, the dragon. Yeah, baby Yoda. Or even the dragon from Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. Uh, there's your 10 inch Godzilla still. Oh my God. Could you imagine like this massively big on your shelf doesn't fit. I want to know how many of you guys own the massive Funko pops ones and where do you keep them? Because they're so big. You have a few. I have a couple. I've got, uh, you Scrooge also have Mc... those giant display cases too. Yeah. I have Scrooge McDuck. Um, I've got the 10 inch Michael Jordan. Trying to think what other one I have. I have one more. I can't remember off the top of my head which one other one I have, but I have like three of them. Yeah, I've you have a lot. I've seen I've seen your collection. I should have taken pictures and taken a video. While here at the I, while here at Burgie Land, ladies and gentlemen, you think my collection is bad, my storage unit. Take a look at Burgie Land. <laughs> this is just this a is portion only... of my collection. <laughs> portion. Yeah, my portions and boxes sitting underneath this darn table because all I just do is just pull out boxes out of the you know, yeah, <laughs> just like him. Mine, mine's not behind me, which it should be. Anyway, there's your ten-inch Godzilla, Gojira, 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 Gojira. Oh, yeah, good right band, too, Gojira. Uh, we also got the generic Godzilla. I love the fact that you have a right pose, left pose, strike a pose. Strike <laughs> He's a like, pose. get my good side. Get strike my good pose. side. <laughs> I, I feel like this is, uh, you know how if you, the TikTok video where it's like, smile, raise your eyebrows, stop smiling. That's your model pose. Here's his model. Po That's the smile. There's his model pose. He just walks away. All right. <laughs> hey, guys, because we see some of you going, strike the pose, strike the pose, strike the pose. <laughs> they did. They did. This is kind of cool. It's annoying. Yeah, there's your... <laughs> what? <laughs> what? But it's so... Who, me? I didn't do it. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you always have that one friend who does their hair real quick and like gets ready for the picture and going, I just want a generic photo. No point of view. Like, I look good in the photo. Yeah, right. You know, you have that one friend that does this. And then they look at your phone like, no, I don't like that picture. No, delete it. Delete it. <sighs> I got a couple of guys that do that. Forget the girls. The guys that do it a lot. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't like it. It makes me look completely fat or I have like a dorky like something looked at him like no no delete that I, I don't want that one other than that whatever why like well like like hot breath godzilla i think he ate Hadouken. something didn't agree with him what? now this would be cool if this glowed in the dark yes i feel like there's a lot of people out there that do customization and would seriously touch this up with the white or something to make that glow in the dark and the blue a different color or somehow it could it glows a little bit differently this is definitely mm -hmm. something i can see people doing you got hot breath i mean uh you have a uh, heat ray godzilla going on right there i say hot breath godzilla 
You also got more Kong action. You have Baby Kong. This is Baby Kong, but he's like in a 10 inch uh, attire. He looks like Baby Kong. Yeah, he does look it, but uh, I can't wait to see what the size of that pop is going to look like, man. His head is going to be massive in that box. That thing is going to be gigantic. Yeah. The fact that they've gone from 10 inch to 12 inch, I think, is ridiculous. Who stores these? Where do you store them? How do you collect? Are they out of the, the box? What about the 18 inch pops at the, the Batman and the Pikachu? Those 18 inch pops, those things are monstrous. All right, the 18 inch. Where are they cake toppers? Like, how do you, how, where, how, what? Oh, God. Please. That's your center piece. That's your center you piece. Your, that's your center piece of your kitchen table or your dining room table. That's what that is. <laughs> okay. You know how, like, people have, like, the extra shells, or whatever. And back then, they used to have, like, the, the chickens or the roosters or whatever the heck on the top of the shelves. Do you not put them in your kitchen? Like, they're on the super top shelf of all the Funko collection. And you know for a fact those are covered in dust and oil marks or whatever, so you constantly have to clean those every like a three months. Layer. <sighs> it is a layer of dust. <laughs> yeah, and you have to worry because you have to use the greaser and pray to God that the paint doesn't come off. The original paint doesn't come off of it. Right. Then, where do you put this on your shelf? If you don't have that top shelf, that clearance top shelf, bottom shelf, where do you hold these? In a box guys, on a floor guys, somewhere, most likely. Show us show us your Funko collection. If you like what you see, go to Instagram.com, follow us, tag us, go us to Instagram, Facebook, tag us. We want to see your Funko collection because I want to know where do you collect these. I want to see your shelf. Are you guys as bad as your VHS DVD collection where it's just like mountains of it somewhere stored? Yeah. Does it look like Burgie's wall right behind you? What does it look like? Let us know. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not going to see what the collections are going to look like. Can you see? I don't know, but see, I like the fact that you have Stormbreaker in his hand now. Yeah, you know, and I look at this too, and you see the different eye colors. So is yeah. there something with that? Like one is he possessed, the other one he's not possessed or something. It has that look like he's possessed. You know? Does he have superpowers we don't know about? Got to have something because, because he's going against Godzilla, who can shoot lasers. <laughs> he's got hot. You got. He's got hot ray breath. Hot ray yeah. breath going on. Um, but meanwhile, it's a blue ray breath. So he's got a bone, and he's got looks like some reptile skin on it as well, too. And this looks like it's a piece of Godzilla. This looks like a. This looks like a piece of Godzilla's. Um, like his, his spine. spikes. Yeah, he took like yeah. a piece of his spike off or something. Ooh. Ooh. Does he rip one off? And he somehow gets the ingenuity to like slab it on a piece of bone? That's going to be. This is going to be interesting. I can't wait to see this now in the movie now. Like, this intrigues if me. Like, we just, if we just gave a spoiler off a of Funko Pop, <gasps> Godzilla rips off a piece. I mean, King Kong rips off a piece of Godzilla and he uses and he uses it as Stormbreaker. Well, now and you he charges that, it up. And remember when we watched the trailer when he hit him with that that breath, he was right. go. He was dropping the the Arching ammonia it. right towards it. Yeah, so maybe that collects the energy from it. Wow, we just man from a pop figure. That's impressive. Yes, we know, but you don't know the story, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I want to know how he got the how he got the spike in the this the the fin. You know, that's gonna be interesting. See, now I want to watch the. Tra I got to rewatch the trailer to see if he looks like because he's we, missing. A right, because if we if if we watch if we watch it right when we watch the other movies and stuff, the his spine, which is part of his spine, it charges with with him attacking. Yeah. Now, if that's the case, when he throws his hot fire on him. Um, he will literally shoot it onto him and that charged as if like he got charged as well too. And then he literally rockets past him. Oh dude. Could you imagine? Oh, uh, it's going to be interesting. I got it. I want to rewatch the trailer again. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> yeah. Right. Anyway, last but not least in the mix for all you Funko fans out there. And that is some Thanos for your Funko Soda Pop people there. <laughs> Just to throw in. Love. 
Yeah. You got to give got a little, a little love, love to Thanos. You know what I mean? We're, we're talking WandaVision, everything. It's popular on TV and it's the hot thing right now. So why not? Angry, angry Thanos out there with the fist of that. De- we call it the fist of destiny right there. He can always throw in that extra. Look, I can see the, uh, the modders do something interesting with this. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm seeing a, out a, middle, there. a middle finger somewhere. <laughs> Even the box art has it ready for it, too. It's not ready right? for a snap. It's ready to just add the extra attachment to it. And the funny thing is they're saying 20,000 pieces, but it does not look like they're doing anything that's saying, like, any chase variants of it or limited. So no, I'm curious if they're going to do. Because they could do this uh, for, as a chase, but with the uh, Iron Man. Ga- no, the Iron Man gauntlet one. Make that the other hand. Right. I could see that with the right hand to left hand. But if yeah. if I was them, they would do either or right now. They'd fix that one first and then wait till later, change his color. You know, you mm-hmm. always change this attire to a little bit more pinkish, a little more purple. You know, change the right hand to the left hand. And if they were going to do it, they would throw an Iron Man in this as well, too, as a chase. Yeah, that'd be nice. Right hand. So your chase is either you're getting Thanos or you're getting Iron Man. Or well, you'd have him holding his blade or with him holding the right hand. Who knows exactly what they're going to do with this as well, too. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of all the toys and everything for this week in toy culture. Uh, Virgie, as would like to end with everything, too, what was some of your favorites uh, that you saw um, out of today's uh, segment uh i'm gonna i'm gonna throw you for a loop uh and i never usually do this but the wrestling figures uh oh. one of my my favorites this week i actually really enjoyed the look of the wrestling figures of triple uh triple h hunter hearst Townsley with jeff hardy i uh, really dug that one and christian edge i really like those figures because it's old school wrestlers it's what i grew up with so those are definitely a couple of my favorites and i gotta go with my style oh, man you can't go wrong with macho man Oh yeah, yeah, brother! And you gotta do the oh yeah. You got. You always did that the way he did. He always like looked like he was shrugging. He did it. You know. So the, those are definitely some uh, fan favorites of mine. And uh, the Cal Kestis for uh, the Star Wars. I like the look of that figure. The extra added pieces, the little like you know cat thing, whatever it was, a little robot piece. Uh, the different lightsabers. I thought that was really a cool piece for definitely some new stuff that they're doing. Well, I think I broke the bank for my choices, and that's going from to, you know, the macho man getting that put on. Then you also got to go get some old school Ghostbusters. <laughs> you got to sign the rubber. I can't do it the whole entire time because I probably cracked my voice eventually. You have such a sucker uh, tomorrow. <laughs> you have such a sore. Yeah. Um, I, I will agree. Yes, I will agree with this one as well, too. The Cal Custis, the rubber ducky. Is one of my favorites. Um, I want to go so much for WWE, but de- definitely have to get Macho Man because he's part of the he's part of the childhood alignment and stuff. Yep. And as far as the Funkos, this is the first time I'm gonna say I have two or three in mind to grab only because of how I act like a fool. So they will be matching my, I guess you know, my style. We'll say you know. Yeah. So there's a few like the mat from the hair to you know the white rabbit. To constantly running like back and forth, and you know, there's a reason why some of us go gray faster than others, but there's a reason why some of us still haven't, you know, <laughs> haven't gone completely gray yet. I to here. Yeah. I like, I like Mia. Mia actually says uh, she likes her Jiminy Cricket. Uh, she likes her Queen Amandalo. She also likes her Godzilla. Uh, Jabo like the Godzilla pup with the Cal Custis. You also got the Macho Man going on there. <laughs> so. Uh, if you like part of the show, let us know what you like during this series as well, too. Let us know. Also, don't forget to tag us and show us your Funko collection, because I know some of you guys have wall-to-wall-to-wall. Some of you have closets. Some of you have a whole garage filled, which is kind of crazy. Don't forget to tag us, because we would love to see your collection. And uh, sooner or later down the line, we'll be happy to post you know, our fan favorites of the week, we'll say. Um... Final thoughts, Bergie, before we get out of here and we get ready for tomorrow? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> anyway, hunting without for all further ado, 
Yes. Without further ado, don't forget to share, like, love, and follow us on Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube. Uh, don't forget to check out our lovable, uh, lovable merchandise uh, store. That is www.artistclub.ninja. Go and grab your exclusive. This week in toy culture, we also have uh, the take, and um, we also have this week in pop culture shirts as well, too. Go and grab those. We also have masks and pillows, and some of us have them available as t-shirts, so go check them out. Um, thank you all for watching. Have a good night, everyone, and we'll see you all tomorrow fresh on the tick. Bye, everyone. Good night, everyone.